good morning as we are now getting closer to Holy Week and this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. We are now looking at the book of Galatians and then during Holy Week we'll look at the Gospel of Matthew. So today we're in Galatians chapter 1 talking about the world's contrary gospel that opposes the gospel of Christ. Paul says, I am astonished that you were so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we've said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Now, we know the grace of Christ in the scripture. We know that in the gospel of Christ, it is Trinitarian. The Father is the one who sent the Son, who now sends the Holy Spirit to us. And the gospel of Christ is found in the Old and New Testament and focuses on justification by grace and the means of grace and the sacraments and the work of the Holy Trinity in our lives. But there are many contrary Gospels, some who proclaim they received it from an angel. It is not an accident that both Joseph Smith, who founded the Mormon Church, and Muhammad, who founded Islam, claimed that angels came and spoke to them. The angel Moroni to Joseph Smith, and various supposed angels speaking to uh, Mohammed. And then they now teach the false teaching and the false religions of Mormonism and Islam, which are actually cults. But there are many people today who have a contrary gospel, a made-up gospel of wealth and prosperity, and we must heed the Apostle Paul when he says, let they be accursed, which is anathema, because those false gospels lead people to hell. It's only the gospel of Christ that we proclaim as one family in our church school and campus ministry and all the faithful Christian churches around the world. Only that true gospel can save us. So let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in these Lenten days, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us to write your word on our hearts that we might know you as the God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless and sustain our synod president, our district president, our circuit visitor, and our pastors, who, like us, are beset with weakness, but grant that they may deal gently with us and keep them faithful in proclaiming your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, your Son came not to be served, but to serve. Help us not lord our authority over one another, but humbly serve one another in our homes, communities, and congregation, as Christ has so humbly served us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look in mercy on all those to whom you have given earthly authority. Guard them from temptation to lord it over us improperly, that they might faithfully serve according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, keep us in the true saving grace and gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ.